with you, Ambassador. Good morning. Good morning. Thank I'm you. very fond of to have you here. In Thank you residence. for hosting us in your house. Yeah. Could you show us a bit more? Yeah, more maybe. Hi. The dining room, my small library. You can see uh, two houses. There's a smaller house for guests. This is my wife. Nice to see you again. How are you? Dear Ambassador, we know there is a big historical past with full of painful events between Poland and Germany. So would you like to begin to start telling us how the relations between Poland and Germany were repaired again after Second World War? Well, uh, after coming to Berlin, I stated that uh, the Second World War is here usually reduced to the Holocaust. And Holocaust began in 1942, uh, I suppose. And the, the war began at 1st uh, September 1939. Uh, mm -hmm. And in these th three first years, hundreds of thousands of Poles were, uh, Poles were killed by German forces. Uh, and I tried to, to, to tell the whole story about the, uh, about the Second World War uh, and the following issues. And well, at the beginning, after the war, the, the, the mood between Poland and, uh, and Germany was not uh, good. We didn't have any diplomatic connection. We started in late 60s with a, a kind of trade context, uh, contact, uh, sorry. And uh, after that, we, we installed an embassy and there was a famous a letter of Polish bishops to, to German bishops that we uh, were asking for forbidden and, uh, and so the, and then the, this uh, politics of uh, Willy Brandt, this new East politics, it, the, there were some stones just to repair our relation but I usually say the main stone, main thing was the uh, uh, beginning of a solidarity movement. A solidarity movement declared that Poles don't have any objection against unification uh, of both Germanys. So that was a beginning of our, I would say, very good relation. And one time at a conference I said this uh, last hundred years in German-Polish relation, I mean, from the uh, arising, new rising of Poland after this First World War, uh, was a horrendum, but I meant, of course, some 70 years, not the, the whole 100 years, uh, but only maybe 70 till, till uh, early 80s, I would say. After, after that, Germany uh, helps us uh, in uh, joining NATO, joining the European Union, so everything is on, on, a, on a good path, I would say. There are some some problems because uh, the German occupants mm -hmm. are also civilian people who came to live in Poland during the war, just robbed everything they, they got from houses. I mean, pianos, bicycles, cars, yeah. furniture, and took it to Berlin and uh, or to Germany. And uh, something like uh, reparation for these people is possible. So we started to talk, to, to to talk about it, uh, and it is a small problem for Germany because it's uh, so 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 far from the war. I don't know how it will end. Now it is discussion not on a government level, but uh, on the level of a kind of uh, a commission in the Polish Parliament. Uh, but I would say we we repaired uh, our relation in the in the way uh, Germany and France did it. We go the same path, the same direction. We see in the press are still some disagreements considering the past events. Uh, you mean in Poland or uh, Ger in Germany? Yeah, because you know, uh, even if German journalists know or should know that there was not a Polish concentration camp, they usually uh, uh, ride it again and again and we have to protest because we think, or some people in Poland think, there is a kind of German uh, historical policy just to say uh, not we Germans 
killed Jews and, and many other nations, uh, or people from nations, but a kind of atmosphere in Europe did it, and every nation was with us, yeah? So also, the, the concentration camps were, were built in Poland before, because Poles were uh, willingly helping uh, Germany, which is not true, which is not, not true. There were, there were, of course, single persons who helped with it, but not the nation, and we had an exile government in London who forbid it, to said you who should help Jews, not to help Germans in killing Jews. And there were uh, some, some, some uh, uh, killings from, uh, uh, ordered from this government for people who betrayed Jews and put uh, them into G German hands. So, uh, so when we, we see almost every month in a newspaper that there were a Polish concentration camp only because of the fact that they were on the Polish, ex-Polish territory. Ex-Polish because German, after beating Poland, had responsibility for the whole territor territory of Poland. So there was not Poland, so Auschwitz is not a Polish concentration camp. On, it is German concentration camp on the ex-Polish territory, I would say that. So if journalists will understand it and don't do again, again these mistakes, we will be very happy. Now we have to protest and usually they change after a while, oh, sorry, and they change it in internet portals or in, uh, excuse uh, themselves in papers. But, you know, there's a kind of automatism, I would say, uh, which should be taken away. Sure. And Warsaw administration, with a new law in February 2018, that in a kind of statement or allegation mentioning that Poland has any responsibility for concentration camps, mm -hmm in Poland, which was invaded by Nazis. Uh, also the sentence, up to three years jail time for the expression of Polish death camps instead of Jewish uh, Nazis death camps, uh, caused tension between two countries. Uh, why Poland government needed such a law after 75 years? Well, I would say it was not a government, it was parliament. Mm -hmm. Some group in parliament mm -hmm. invented this law uh, just uh, uh, making similar thing as Israel does in the, in the case of Auschwitz uh, lie. Uh, and I, I suppose we, we went too far. We wanted to, to omit or to for, forbid such situation as uh, this name, Polish concentration camp, which is not true, uh, and put us in a bad light, I would say. But actually it was impossible to punish people from abroad just for saying things like that and uh, this uh, this law uh, was never executed after uh, two or three months it was taken out and so it, it, it doesn't exist anymore mm -hmm. so we we thought we came to conclusion that it was a bad movement and we withdraw uh, ourselves from this mm -hmm. and it has been alleged that in an event in Berlin uh, you considered the Poland policy of Germany as a disaster. And uh, what was the reason caused the headlines such as the ambassador angered Berlin on uh -huh. German newspapers? No, it was a different. Uh, I said that uh, because the conference was about German Poland's Polish policy in the last hundred years. I mean, uh, from, the, uh, f from the, the end of the First World War, uh, it was a time, the time, time uh, in a uh, historical moment in which uh, Poland rose again after 123 uh, years of, of division, of non-existence uh, on the uh, map of, of, of Europe. Uh, till now, 100 years, and uh, uh, of German policy about Poland or towards Poland, and I said, uh, exaggerating a little bit, that the whole hundred was a catastrophe, but I would say some 70 years was a catastrophe mm -hmm. because uh, we usually think about occupation, this six years of war, but the policy of uh, the government of so-called Weimar Republic was the same uh, as a Hitler's politic. They didn't have any measures, but they were very aggressive and very uh, so unpleasant towards Poland, and just after the Second World War, there was a lot of groups 
of uh, emigrants from ex-Poland to Germany that made a, let's say, bad blood between the relation. Um, so uh, maybe after 70 years from the First World War, the situation uh, changed a little bit after this uh, knee fall of uh, Willy Brandt in Warsaw, but it was a small sign. The second sign, this letter between uh, Polish, uh, or letter of Polish bishops to German bishops, and these German bishops didn't react spontaneously very positive. They were thinking uh, it was astonishing for us, but then they started to repeat uh, as Christians to Christians, but the, the real um, change was uh, as a um, solidarity movement uh, uh, started to, uh, to exist, and uh, we were, uh, I, I was, um, a member of this of this movement, I, I'm a member of Solidarity uh, Trade Union this, the whole time. So, um, and we were the opinion that uh, the re reunification of Germany is something obvious, and only if uh, Germany is reunified, it means if GDR Germany uh, German Democratic uh, ceases to exist. Poland had chance to be free from communism. So there was not only goodwill, but also a kind of calculation from our side. And it, uh, it went well, as you know, because this unification made possible that we are free from, from influence from, from uh, Russian communists at that time. So that was a real uh, sense of my words, not the whole hundred. <laughs> the last 30 years are uh, not bad, could be better. Could be better, I was not bad. Okay. And uh, Prime Minister Morawiecki recently said Poland opposes the mandatory quota system for immigrants uh, from North Africa and Middle East. It is possible to say Poland has more strict migration uh, policy compared to other European countries. In spite of the warning of, uh, from EU, Poland and also some other EU countries are pe uh, persisting on strict migration policies. What exactly Poland and EU disagree about? We had an impression that uh, first European Union, especially European Commission, uh, make no difference between refugees and immigrants. And most of the people who are here in, West, in Western Europe treated as refugee are economical uh, migrants. And uh, I think, not only me, but also some German politicians uh, like Stanislaw uh, Tillich, ex-Prime Minister of, uh, uh, of Saxony, said to, to, to me or to us, to ambassadors of the uh, European Union during a lunch, that Germany should have a, a well, good immigration policy, that they shouldn't accept everybody who wants just to, to be here. It's, there is not a, such a, a law uh, that someone from Africa wants just to, to, to live here and can do it. He has to be accepted by authority uh, here through the visa in embassy and so on. So, so uh, we uh, think that uh, immigration, also Im uh, economical Im uh, immigration, it's something needed and something uh, positive, but should be controlled. And we, Poles, need also some working uh, uh, craft, let's say, of people, uh, because uh, uh, after uh, joining the European Union, uh, two, almost two million Poles left Poland to Germany and to, to Great Britain and to Ireland mostly. And we suddenly need also people to work. And, but we, so we need uh, economical immigrants, but we have them mostly from the Ukraine and from uh, Belarus. Uh, some 1 million, 1.5 million people from these two countries and some others work in Poland. So we are not principally against migration, but we are uh, uh, for, uh, let's say, uh, regulated migration, not so spontaneous that people coming with boats to us invades us. Yeah? That's a, and we have also a small uh, uh, Muslim uh, group in, in Poland that is well in, uh, integrated in the Polish society. So we are not afraid of, of, of people from different religions. Also, people from the Ukraine or from Belarus, they are not Catholics, for instance. They are Christian, but not Catholics. We accept them fully. Yeah? Okay. 
And uh, there are some worries from European Union arguing that Poland is now on the road from liberal democracy to authoritarianism to control over civil life, media and court uh, has been said to be contradicting with uh, European standards. 30 years after the end of communism, Poland actually emulate that uh, the authoritarian system again or is it the perception difference in Europe? No, it's, uh, I think it's totally misunderstanding of, uh, or misinterpretation uh, of what is going on in Poland. Poland needed a reform uh, of many aspects uh, of, let's say, public life. Uh, we had a very, di very difficult road to, to, to freedom to Western standards after the fall of the uh, Berlin uh, Wall. We thought that it, everything will happen automatically, that, but it was not so easy. We had a great group of uh, communists or ex-communists. Uh, they, they profited from the uh, transformation more than other peop people in the society and built uh, some, some very, uh, let's say, complicated structures in the society that uh, after some years, of transformation showed that we are developing slower than our neighbors like Czech, Slovaks, Hungarians. And it was because of this post-communist structures. So we needed after this 30 years to, to, to solve it, to change it through reforms. And suddenly it appears that this, this structure has some help, I would say, from uh, European uh, Union. Uh, and uh, these reforms are um, getting slower or are even stopped. But we still try to, to well, the seven, over 70% of the society uh, said and say uh, all the time that the uh, juridical system should be repaired, that it doesn't function well. Simple people uh, experience uh, it on their skin ev every day when they go to to, to the court to get justice, they don't get it because uh, the judge are from the, let's say, another epoch, I would say. So this, and according to treaties, to European treaties, the juridical system is in the hand of a country. And suddenly we experience that people from uh, Brussels want uh, to say what is possible, what is not possible. It's uh, against the treaties. Uh, so we, li we live now in a very um, dangerous and complicated phase because European uh, uh, Commission wants to enlarge its power and its interest of every country, not only of Poland, to stop this, to, to keep Commission on the ground of the treaties and the, the, this, this uh, parliamentary election, European parliamentary election, will decide uh, in what direction it will go. Uh, if something like super state governed by uh, European Commission from the people who are not elected by anybody will govern uh, uh, about uh, juridical or and other s elements of, of uh, uh, societies in, in some countries or if it will be governed by the parliaments of these countries. I, and Poland's, of course, for the second solution, for, for the role of uh, national parliaments, uh, as it was uh, stated in, in, in a treatise, because we think, you, you, are talk, you are talking about democracy, the, nowadays in Europe, democracy can function only in states, on the, even European Parliament is not democratic in the sense as national parliaments are. Because, you know, uh, countries like, like Malta, with a small population, uh, have more influence than, like, uh, than countries like Poland with 40 millions. Because there are some, uh, some formulas and so on. So it is, uh, and maybe because of this, the, the, the power of uh, a European Parliament is not com uh, comparable to, to the power of parliaments, of national parliaments. So we think national parliaments should be on the first place and, and then uh, uh, this, this bodies in the European Union. But there are other opinions, so there will be a kind of discussion, maybe a kind of fight. But uh, European Union needs a reform. It's obvious after Brexit. 
Uh, and uh, there is a, now time for, for, for discussion about uh, different visions. And uh, as you know, uh, President Macron um, promotes his vision. Now we, we are asked by uh, our German friends to produce our own vision, just to compare, and Germany will maybe uh, join the discussion. And uh, I hope till the end of the year there will be uh, elaborated a kind of, of line of development of the European Union, which, will, which satisfies uh, most countries. Because now uh, I think that many countries are not satisfied with what's going on in the European Union, but smaller country just don't, uh, don't speak about it, just uh, try to, to live, to work, to earn money and to, to profit. But uh, with, in some years, there will be also a problem for them. So it would be better that uh, if they joined the discussion about the future of the European Union, that we don't have in the future such cases like Brexit. Because Europe is strong only as a whole. If we just take some countries away, or if we never accept, let's say, uh, as a, let's say, an experiment in thoughts, that uh, Balkan country will never join Union. That will, uh, is also nothing, nothing good, I would say. We should still think about uh, the Europe as a whole, even with the Ukraine in some maybe 20 years. And then we are really a global player. Then now we, have, we live in a time of, I would say, global player, China, America, Russia is still here, yeah. So we, Europe should be united, but uh, in the sense that it's accepted by every country. In July, Poland put Ukrainian citizen activist uh, Ludmila Kozlowska on a list of people barred from entering the Schengen uh, travel zone. But after she was allowed to uh, take part in a debate at uh, Bundestag in Berlin in the last September. Poland's government has reacted angrily against Germany. Later, she was also invited to Brussels. Mm -hmm. uh, why she was so threatening for Poland? And what do you think about Germany and Brussels permitting to entrance in? Well, I don't know exactly why uh, she was expelled from Poland. I, um, I'm sure that the, there were reasons for a secret agency to do it. We observed uh, her um, uh, how was it, society or something, an organization she had, in, uh, she has still in Poland. This organization got money from uh, Russian or U Ukraine millionaires uh, and uh, acted in a very specific way. She, all, she was also at, uh, at the on the front of many anti-government uh, demonstrations. And I suppose the um, uh, secret uh, services had reasons to do it. And we are very unhappy with that, what Germany uh, or some, some um, people, from, some members of uh, Bundestag did, inviting him. It was breaking the rules. Of course, it, they, they told to me, there is, Mr. Ambassador, there is possible if, uh, to, to break this rule, uh, I mean, if somebody is expelled from uh, uh, Schengen realm, uh, she, she or he is not allowed to, to go to any country. But there's a, a, an exemption, uh, exception that um, if the person is important for the security of a country. So they use this argument, but I cannot imagine what kind of security of Germany should be important connected. So it was a, a kind of showing that if we do something, we should accept it. If you do something in, in the frames of, of, of rules, we don't need to accept it. And I, I suppose people in Poland see it. Yeah? And look, we are still members of a second category, and I wouldn't like it. Yeah? It would be better that people in Poland are still very pro-European and think we are a real member. We are treated as everybody. We, Poles, would never do the same for uh, let somebody who is expelled from Germany or from an inviter, it was it is impossible for us. So you know you see the difference, yeah. That's the problems, uh, but not not our problems. That's a problem of Germany and from Brussels, yeah. They show the power. Nord Stream Two is much debated subject currently. What is the standing point of Poland uh, to the project, which uh, Germany supports, even though United States uh, opposes it? Well, we are. 
still uh, very negative about uh, this project. Uh, we think that uh, actually Germany doesn't need the second stream because they have Nord Stream 1. And there is uh, also possible to get gas from uh, this liquid gas from, um, from Kuwait, from America, and there will be a pipe uh, from Polish uh, pipe from, from Norwegian uh, uh, sources. So in the future we, we could do it uh, in this diversification frames. But they decided something else, I mean German, at the beginning they, they said it's a p purely economical project, now they say it's also a political project but realized by private companies so we don't. Uh, and, uh, but the, it will have many negative um, aspects, one of them is this ga uh, gas pipe from, through the Ukraine that will probably stop to exist because the, the contract between Russia and the Ukraine uh, ceases this year, the end of this year, and Russian put the conditions that if it is not repaired, they say 20% of the gas, because the installation is old, goes into the air. So if you don't repair it, we may stop it, because it's, it's not <laughs> logical. And now the, Ukraine, the Ukrainians have how many? Nine or eight months to repair it. It is almost, impos almost impossible to repair it. We, well, so if they stop to, 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 to bring the gas through this uh, Ukraine, U Ukraine will not get money for this. Ukraine uh, can, uh, for, for the Ukraine, the gas uh, supply can be stopped any time. So it's a danger for, for the Ukraine in the time as there is war on the border. So it's not the perfect situation. And to be honest, I must say, it's, sometimes it is hard for me to understand the German policy. Uh, on the one hand, they are very protective for the Ukraine, try to help the Ukraine. On the other hand, they give millions, billions to, uh, to Putin, uh, for, also for military reasons. But the explanation of this is on the German <laughs> side, I would say. Poland will invest 50 billion dollars uh, for renovation of the army by the year 2026. As one of the European Union countries, why Poland needs such a big renovation? Well, I would say uh, the importance or significance of Turkey uh, in the world is grounded probably mostly on the power of the uh, Turkish army. Uh, even, uh, yeah, and Turkey is situated in a different uh, region of the world and we also, we are also on the, on the border to the Soviet Union and we think uh, that there is still a, a huge danger from, uh, um, uh, from Russia uh, and the proofs for that are what happened in Georgia some years ago, what is now happening in, in the Ukraine and some four or five years ago, we are even more afraid of, of some, some uh, movements of military forces on, in the Belarus, some exercises. So that's why we wanted uh, Americans and uh, international troops in Poland. And that's why mm, we are trying to, 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 to deal according to appeal of Mr. Trump, President of the United States, to, to enlarge our expenses to this 2% or even 2.5%. We stay at the border of, uh, of the European Union, Union and we would like to develop economically without any feeling of danger that somebody will come and uh, take things from us or some parts of territory. And American uh, like it very much and support it. And yesterday we had uh, again a, a communique from the White House that uh, another thousand uh, American soldiers were st stationed here in Poland. So American uh, discovered that it's an important uh, place in Europe just to, to be protected from Russia. And Russia shouldn't feel in danger. NATO was never an aggressive pact, never attacked anybody. Uh, and this is not in our interest. We don't have an interest to, to attack Russia. We will never do it. But we would like to be uh, in a normal situation, yeah? just protected by our soldiers. And th the problem is also connected with it that uh, this previous government of Mr. Tusk, who is now, let's say, president of <laughs> European <laughs> uh, uh, Council, uh, they made 
they reduced army more and more and more. And we had some years ago 150,000 soldiers, and now it's almost 100. But it was times as it was 90, 80,000 uh, uh, soldiers. If you think, if you compare it to Turkish army, you are twice so as big. Uh, uh, but still, uh, it's too 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 little for us. Yeah, this 150 uh, should be done. And now we try also to to develop. Uh, uh, territory, territorial defense system uh, in the sense uh, that uh, is done in, uh, in uh, Switzerland. So because we think it's a good idea, it's cheaper to have uh, people trained with weapons somewhere in magazines and that's a way also additional way to, to that and develops quite well. Poles want to protect Europe. And there is a rise of right wing uh, in Europe in recent years. Similarly, National Conservative Party PIS won the elections in Poland in 2015. First, it was considered to be a temporary movement, but it spread uh, widely. What mm -hmm. is your opinion about that? Well, my opinion is that uh, this, this movement, this party, uh, realizes uh, the heritage of solidarity movement. Uh, and that's why it is protected, uh, it, is, uh, it was chosen by the uh, the uh, society for, for, for governing the country uh, and I, I hope that uh, in, the, in the election in autumn this year the, this constellation because it is a peace party and two other small parties, uh, three parties together, uh, that they will again because we need uh, maybe eight and maybe 12 years, so three time, times, uh, three periods, just to renew, to renovate, to, to, to uh, repair, I would say, can, uh, the country in many respects, not only in this uh, military uh, we aspect we mentioned uh, a while ago, but also in many other, for, for in, uh, most of all in, in economy. After uh, 2015, economy develops so, uh, so fantastic that uh, government got a lot of money through taxes from other sources just to, to introduce many social reforms, to give to money to, 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 the, uh, to groups of people who are, who are very poor, like a pensioner or like a, a family with many children. So most of, of, of the society is very satisfied with these reforms. In a case of legal reform, it's a little bit stopped by the European Union, but we're still going slowly, but uh, going uh, farther. So uh, it's also a reform of school system, reform of the universities. I am, man of, I am a man of university, and I have to say that uh, universities didn't de develop well after this uh, transformation or in this transformation. It was something wrong in, this, in the system. The uh, successes we had, uh, let's say, in, in important uh, works or important in, uh, um, inventions, uh, when we compare them to those uh, from the, between the war time, I mean, after the, between the first and much are much smaller. So it means uh, they were, our ancestors were much better because they were free from these communist uh, structures. And these communist structures also at the universities, also in courts, uh, almost <laughs> everywhere should be slowly eliminated from the, from the game uh, to establish a real freedom, real competition and success from this, yeah, coming from, from all of this. So that's, that's uh, uh, my reaction to this. I hope the peace government will, will have a chance to continue the reforms uh, it, it opened. And it is m more on and more accepted also in, in Germany. I, 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 the first year uh, uh, of my stay here, uh, yeah, the ex-government uh, representatives were always almost uh, every month here, uh, invited and, and, and uh, listened to. And now it is uh, rather that the representative of government come and, and uh, tell what's going on in Poland. So it changes in a positive direction, but we need the second period. What about new elections in uh, fall of 2019? Well, there was a kind of uh, 
um, expertise and almost ev every week a new one. And this, uh, this from the, uh, well, two days ago, uh, was that uh, peace have 40% and the Tusk party, I, I call it Tusk party because he's, even if he's in, in Brussels, uh, he tries to, to do something <laughs> good for his party in saying, so it's 20, 21. So you can see 40 against 21. So uh, the, the only problem is these people from the opposition, they call themselves total op opposition. So they criticize everything. They themselves don't have any program. Don't have any program. They don't think about it. Just criticize everything what's happening. And this, there is this uh, Tusk par party and some small parties. And they now now try to join themselves just to beat uh, peace. Yeah. And if they join themselves, they have something like 36, 38. But still, they, this less, less. Than, yeah. So we hope we will win. Oh, I mean, because I, I part of this of this movement or, or in this reparation of, of the country. So I'm very happy it happens after uh, so many lost years. I would say sometimes it's I'm criticizing them saying that these these years were lost. No, they are they were not lost. We got money from Brussels. We were uh, pushed to to reform things, but they were much slower because of this let's post communist structures in every at the, uh, every institution i would say in 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 the army at the universities uh, in in courts everything was uh somewhere linked to this ex communist powers that were not eliminated from life yeah they should be not punished okay we made an agreement we we, we made peace with them but they were, they were they should be eliminated from decision, yeah. Mm -hmm. So in important uh, fields, yeah. So we are now trying to do. It's not easy, but we are going in the right direction, I'd say. What do you think uh, about free media in Poland? I think that uh, they exist, uh, uh, despite uh, of that what is uh, said in Germany. Uh, there is a huge uh, landscape of media because there, I mean, also in political sense, because there, there are many different parties, many different movements, and ev ev everybody would like to, to, to have a kind of media just to, to make uh, uh, their uh, thinking or their style uh, public. Uh, so you can. Uh, by a newspaper, a ex-communist ex newspaper, Tribuna. Some years ago it was Tribuna Ludo, now it's Tribuna, but it's for ex-communist. And on the one side, extreme sign, on the other extreme side there are some uh, Catholic uh, magazines that uh, dealing not only with uh, religion, but also with uh, uh, social policy, things like that. So, and in, in the middle you have all the spectrum. So, and uh, the, the accusation are about unfreedom uh, in Poland in this respect are coming from, uh, from accusation about the public uh, television. Uh, but I, I watch this public television upstairs here and can say that uh, they try to be objective. They try to invite people from opposition. If they have a discussion with four people, two of them are from the opposition. If they have yeah. sex, three of them. So, and they let uh, to express uh, points or uh, yeah. Uh, so I, I, they 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 protect or uh, act according to the journalist rules. So I think there is no danger for f uh, freedom of Polish media. I have some information about Poland. I want to read that. The flag of Poland Republic with red line at the bottom and white one at the top has two lines. White color represents peace and red one represents the blood uh, that was bled in wars to fight for peace. Yeah. The symbol of the country is white eagle. Yes. Poland has 15 Nobel Prizes, four of them which are Peace Prizes. Yes. In UNESCO World Heritage List, there are 17 sites from Poland. Mm -hmm. right. it, has to, it has the fourth biggest forest land in Europe. Yeah, yeah. In Europe, 
it has the youngest average age for marriage. What is the reason? The, young, the youngest? Well, it's, I don't know the, the reason, but it's bi biologically very good that people <laughs> <laughs> get married as young and they have children as young. People, young children, uh, yeah, that's maybe healthier. I don't know. Uh, if it's ground families, usually uh, we do it between, let's say, 21 and 27, something like that. Mm -hmm. Although I, I would say in the recent time maybe this goes some, somewhere in a later time because many people work very active and try to establish a position and then have children. There's a kind of uh, uh, ten, yeah, uh, a kind of kind of something that is taken from the Western country from the capitalistic system, but. I would say it's better sometimes to have children as uh, one is young and try to, to work at the same time because uh, young people have more energy yeah, also for, for children. Yeah? Correct. The country had been invaded 43 times between 1600 to uh, 1945. Mm. <laughs> wow. So many times, yes, yeah. right. Because we, we, we are situated in the middle of Europe and uh, there are big powers, uh, Russian and, and, and Germany, Germany is Prussia, also Austria was powerful at some time, so we are uh, also under the tension and we had a lot of, of uh, wars with Turkey some years ago. <laughs> and for the first time in Europe and for the second time in the world, the constitution was written in Poland. Yeah, 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 yes, yes. The second after the American Constitution was the Polish, uh, before the French Constitution. And I met in during a conference in uh, Dresden, Dresden uh, a week ago a professor of constitutional law, a German professor, who didn't know that the uh, uh, Polish Constitution was the second in Europe. I was so surprised. And it's uh, historical moment. Yeah. <laughs> so it shows that the. Uh, the inhabitants of Poland of these times felt this freedom, felt that they are citizens of a, of a country and they wanted to regulate their life with a constitution. And much before uh, German or other countries th thought about it. So we are very, uh, let's say, originally democratic people. And democracy is something we have in blood or freedom is something we have in blood. We are, that's why we are ready uh, to fight for freedom also for other countries. Yeah? And Polish soldiers were, during the Second World War, in the, the whole, whole possible armies that fought uh, against the uh, Nazi regime. If I ask you to introduce Poland with three words, what would you say? <laughs> Well, I would say patriotism, uh, individual feeling of individual freedom. So we are always revolting against an, every tyrant that wanted to. Uh, and the third uh, one, draw oh, it's uh, uh, well, really religiosity. I would say uh, this connection. So if, uh, if the, let's say. Football fans of this of these reconstructional groups, they said, the main values for us is uh, God, uh, honor, and uh, fatherland. Uh, I mean motherland. So these are the uh, so this religion is, is is important because in Poland uh, still maybe fifty percent of of a society goes to to the church. Uh, once weekly, uh, maybe 95% uh, are Christian. So, so uh, uh, religion, religion is important for them. And there's a big difference to Western society, big difference. And which features of your country you would like to be known more widely around the world? Well, that uh, we are, how to say it, um, good workers, for instance, yeah? That, uh, that secondly, uh, so I mean, responsible for what we do, uh, well done in, in contracts with, with our people. That secondly, we are not anti-Semitic. We were never anti-Semitic as a nation. Uh, so this is the first uh, thing. And that we are for, let's say, 
uh, because of this patriot for, for uh, going to Europe with national cultures yeah, as a kind of uh, heritage mm -hmm. taken from the past, connection with the past, learning from the history. I mean, that we, we don't accept everything what happened. We are also c critical about our own history. It is not so that we uh, say everything was, was, was well. Uh, but uh, fortunately, there, al there were almost no facts in our history that we uh, were occupants or uh, tyrants of something. So maybe I could say only two small events in our history that we are not very nice for somebody. <laughs> and Mr. Ambassador, uh, I would like to talk about a uh, very famous Polish cuisine. Shall we continue at dining room to the interview? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's prepared. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay.